Okay, in this video we're going to look at an interesting trigonometry problem. What we want to do is find the value of this in terms of some nicer expression. So we've got the fourth root of five times the cosine of one half of arc tangent of two. In other words, one half of the inverse tangent of two. And we'll use the following two uh, nice results in order to get this. We'll call them lemma one and lemma two. So lemma one says that cosine squared equals one half times one plus cosine two theta and lemma two says that cosine of the inverse tangent of x is one over x squared plus one. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the proof of lemma one. And so for the proof of lemma one, we're going to use Euler's formula. And Euler's formula says that e to the i theta equals cosine of theta plus i times sine of theta. And you can get that by looking at power series if you want to, or um, there are a couple of other ways to get this identity. And now what we want to do is look at e to the i 2 theta and e to the i theta quantity squared. And notice that those two are the same quantity using the fact that we have exponent rules. And notice that we can write e to the i 2 theta as cosine of 2 theta plus i sine of 2 theta. Great. And then we can write e to the i theta squared as cosine of theta plus i sine of theta quantity squared. Okay, good. But now multiplying that out, we'll get the following. So for the real part, we'll get cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. So from that we get cosine squared and then i times sine quantity squared, but that'll be negative one times sine and then you obviously add them together. And then for the complex part or the imaginary part, I should say, we get two i cosine theta sine theta. And now extracting the real part of the equation on both sides, we'll see that we get cosine of 2 theta equals cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. So let's write that down. We have cosine of 2 theta equals cosine squared theta uh, minus sine squared theta. Okay, good. But now we can replace sine squared theta with 1 minus cosine squared theta. So let's do that. 1 minus cosine squared theta. Okay. But now what we can do is uh, combine cosine squared theta on uh, the right-hand side of the equation. We'll see that we get 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. So notice we have cosine of 2 theta equals 2 cosine squared theta minus 1, but it's pretty obvious that you can solve this for cosine squared theta, and we'll get 1 half 1 plus cosine 2 theta as desired. Okay, so that's the end of this proof of lemma 1, but before we move on, I want to point out that we can get lots of trigonometric identities by working with Euler's formula right here. Okay, so like I said, we're done with the proof of lemma 1. And now we're ready to move on to the proof of lemma two. So lemma two says that cosine of arc tan x equals uh, one over x squared plus one. So uh, let's see how we can do that. So here's what we'll do. We'll set arc tan x equal to theta. So we have theta equals arc tan of x. And now we'll take the tangent of both sides. So notice that's equivalent to saying that the tangent of theta equals x. And I'm going to write that as x over 1. And then let's recall by the definition that the tangent is um, the opposite over adjacent when we're talking about right triangles. So now we can draw a triangle which represents this value of theta or sorry, this value of tangent. So we have a right triangle here. Here's our angle theta. And notice we'll have um, x here and a one here. But now uh, notice that by the Pythagorean theorem, we can fill in this part and we'll get x squared plus one, the square root of that. Okay, good. But it follows immediately that if we take the cosine of theta, we get the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is one over the square root of x squared plus one. But now notice that theta was equal to the arctan of x, so we can just replace theta equal to the arctan of x in there, and we get cosine of arctan of x 
equals 1 over the square root of x squared plus 1. And so that finishes the proof of lemma 2. And now we're ready to move on to uh, our desired result. So we want to find out if there's a nice formula for this quantity up here. And being inspired by lemma 1, we'll actually calculate the square of this and then take the square root in the end. So let's notice that if we take the fourth root of 5 times cosine of 1 half arctan of 2 and we square this whole thing, that's going to give us the square root of 5 times cosine of squared and then 1 half arctan of 2. Okay, great. But now what we can do is we can use lemma 1 with theta equal to 1 half arctan of 2. So let's write that down. So use lemma 1 with theta equal to um, 1 half arctan of 2. So notice what that does for us. That allows us to write this as the square root of 5. And then uh, we can switch out cosine squared for 1 half times the quantity 1 plus cosine of 2 theta. So I'll take the uh, over 2 out. And then we'll have uh, 1 plus cosine of 2 theta. But that's going to wipe out the half in there. So we get um, arctan of 2 inside. Okay, great. And now uh, the next thing we want to do is use lemma 2 with x equal to 2. And so now recall that lemma 2 says that the cosine of arctan of x is 1 over the square root of x squared plus 1. So notice that's going to give us uh, the square root of 5 over 2 stays out front plus 1, sorry, and then 1 plus... 1 over the square root of 2 squared plus 1. Okay, good. But notice that's equal to the square root of 5 over 2, and then 1 plus 1 over the square root of 5. Okay, good. But now notice that's going to simplify uh, to the following result. We can multiply that square root of 5 inside, and that's going to give us 1 half square root of 5 plus 1. But now notice that uh, can more traditionally be written in a way that we could um, observe that it's a nice number as 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2, which is, in other words, the golden ratio. So we have the square of our goal is the golden ratio. In other words, our goal, which is the fourth root of 5 times the cosine of 1 half arctan of 2, is equal to the square root of the golden ratio. And that finishes the calculation that we wanted to do and finishes this video.